What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next question, dealing with circles. So we have to first verify that the points negative five and two and negative two and five lie on the circle x squared plus y squared is equal to 29. And then we also have to verify that the perpendicular bisector between those two points, where those two points are gonna be the endpoints of the chord, AB, we have to verify that that perpendicular bisector goes through the circle's center. Now, this last part here, I just wanna generally explain. For all circles, there's actually a rule. I think it's called the perpendicular bisector of a chord conjecture, if you wanna Google that and read more about it. But basically, if you take any chord on a circle, which is just the line that connects two points that are on the circle. So let's say we take these two points here. Okay, this here would be a chord. Now, the perpendicular bisector of this line here, of this chord, which would be a line going through the midpoint and then perpendicular to this line. So this line, it's always gonna go through the center of the circle. Let's say the center is over here. And that's for any chord that you draw. So let's say we draw a chord maybe from here to here with these two points. So we draw the chord, the perpendicular bisector on this. If we find the equation of that, that's gonna go through the center as well. Or it could be, let's say from here to here, right? We draw a chord, perpendicular bisector of that chord is going to go through this center right so that's a general rule and that's what we're going to be showing in this specific case so let's um let's first graph this circle so we got x squared plus y squared is equal to 29 so the center of the circle is at zero and zero right whenever you have a circle x squared plus y squared equals r squared where the left side is in this format, it's just x squared plus y squared, the center is always gonna be at zero and zero. So we have this x squared plus y squared is equal to 29. So first let's verify that these points are on that. And how do we verify? Well, all we have to do is we have to plug in the x and y values of the points and make sure that the left side is just equal to the right side. We've done that in previous examples. So if we plug in negative five, and two for the x and y value respectively. Notice we're gonna end up with 25 plus four. And notice that left side is equal to right side for that. And then negative two and five, same thing. So we got x squared plus y squared is equal to 29. So we'll have negative two squared plus five squared. Notice here we'll have four plus 25 left side equals right side. Okay, so that's how we verify that certain points are on a circle. So if we graph this now, let's graph these points. So negative five and two. So negative five, two, that's gonna be like over here, let's say. So this is point A, negative five and two. And then we have a negative two, and positive five. So that's gonna be like over here, let's say, right? This would be point B. Let me kinda of put maybe more of a curve to this circle at this region, just so we could clearly see the chord when we draw it. Uh, so we got negative two and five. So we verified that both of those points are on the circle. And so we're dealing with this chord over here. Right, this is chord AB. And so what we gotta do is verify that the perpendicular bisector of this chord is gonna go through the center of the circle, and the center of the circle in this specific case is zero and zero. So we basically have to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector for this line with these endpoints. It just becomes that kind of question that we've done before. So what are the steps? Well, the first step is let's find the slope of the chord AB, which would just be Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. 
So let's label this x1, y1. We'll label this x2, y2. So we would end up with y2, which is 5, minus y1, which is 2, over x2, which is negative 2, minus uh, x1, which is negative 5. Be careful with the brackets over here. So we'd end up with 3 over negative 2 plus 5. These two negatives turn into a positive. Ends up giving us 3 as well. So we would end up with positive 1 right there. That's the slope of this chord. So the slope of the perpendicular bisector is going to be the negative reciprocal of this, the perpendicular slope. So this is like 1 over 1. If we flip it, it's going to be 1 over 1 as well. And then this is a positive, so this ends up being a negative. Negative 1 over 1 is just negative 1. So that's going to be the slope of this perpendicular bisector right here. We're finding the equation of this line. Okay, so we have the slope we're going to work with of the line we're finding, which is negative 1. And now we need this point, which is going to be the midpoint, right? The point that bisects this line, where these lengths are going to be the same. So this midpoint we have to find. And then once we have the midpoint, we can find the equation of the line because we have the slope of the line plus a point it's going through. So the midpoint is going to be x1 plus x2 divided by 2, y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So we'll have uh, negative 5 plus negative 2. That's going to be divided by 2. And then we'll have y1, which is 2, plus uh, y2, which is 5. And that's going to be divided by 2, like that. And so what we would end up with, negative 5 plus negative 2, that's like negative 5 minus 2, which would give us negative 7. That's going to be over 2. And then this is going to be 2 plus 5, which is 7 over 2, so positive 7 over 2. Or if you want to work with decimals, negative 3.5 and positive 3.5. And notice on our graph that makes sense as well. It makes sense that this point would have a negative x value and a positive y value. Right, and those points, notice between negative 5, negative 2, negative 3.5, between 2 and 5, positive 3.5. Right, so you could always, if you graph it, check your steps on the way, whether they make sense graphically. All right, so we have that point. Uh, I'm going to use the fractions like usual just because they're tougher to work with and if your teacher requires you to use them. So over here, we just have to find the equation of the line with this slope passing through that point. So the slope is negative 1, so negative x plus b. We've got to solve for that b value. 7 over 2 for the y. We'll plug in negative 7 over 2 for the x. Be careful here. right? We're plugging in negative 7 over 2 for this entire x, then we still got that negative on the outside. And then we end up with 7 over 2 equals negative negative turn into a positive. Bring this over, the b value just ends up being 0 because we'll have 7 over 2 minus 7 over 2. And so the final equation, we would just plug in this b value here, it would be negative x plus 0. Well, we can just have negative x like that. So that's going to be the equation of this line. Now, how do we verify that it's going through the center? Zero, zero. Well, just how we verified that those points were on the circle, we take the equation and we plug in for y, the zero, and we plug in zero for x. We just make sure left side is equal to right side, and notice in this case, it indeed does. Just want to make a quick heads up that if you're dealing with a circle that has a center zero, zero, which is most of the circles we're dealing in this section, the perpendicular bisector should always have a b value of zero. If it's going to go through zero and zero, then if a line goes through zero and zero, then that means the y-intercept is zero, which always means the b value is zero. So it's always going to be in the form y equals ax, where a is going to be some kind of number, some kind of real number. right? In this case, it was negative 1, but it could be negative 2, positive 4, positive 5, whatever it is. A line in this format is always going to go through 
zero and zero. Okay, but you got to be careful because you could always have circles that have different kinds of centers. We haven't gone through that yet, but there will be a video covering that. Uh, your teacher may cover those kinds of circles, may not. In grade 10, usually you're just covering circles with zero and zero. All right, so no matter what kind of chord you draw on a circle, the perpendicular bisector of a chord is always going to go through the center of the 